Good afternoon. My name is Bogdana Neborak. I'm a culture manager from Ukraine. And today I'm going to tell you about the new contemporary Ukrainian literature already known abroad. I mean the freshest translations, but also the heavyweights of the Ukrainian literature and the novels that were already published in more than 10 countries. In 2021, we celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Ukrainian independence. And that means that we already have the 30 years of the contemporary Ukrainian literature. This literature is already depicted by the scholars in Ukraine as well as abroad, and also by the literary critics. Literature is the best way to tell the histories and stories of Ukrainians. And I dare say that it is a mirror in which we see ourselves. But it is also a mirror in which the foreigners might see us and listen to our stories. Thus, I have a pleasure, for example, to compare the characters in Ukrainian literature. In 1990s, we saw the Bohemian poet and the intellectual. In the beginning of the new millennium, we see the abandoned person, a person seeking for its roots. And now, after the revolution of dignity in Ukraine, we see really diverse stories which are depicting the newest contemporary history of Ukraine. Now I am going to tell you about four most known novels of the Ukrainian literature abroad. Also, I will tell you about the freshest tendencies in Ukrainian literature and the new stars in Ukrainian literature. So let's start. And first of all, I wish to tell you about four novels that have already been published in more than 10 languages. The first one is Moskoviat by Yuri Andruhovich, and it was published in 1992 and written by the author in Munich. It is the masterpiece of post-colonial writing and tells us the story of a young writer who comes to Moscow for a study. This writer discovers himself and his identity while being in Moscow, and he thinks of himself in connection with his native land. This is a story about how the Soviet Union fell down. But this is also the story of a post-colonial identity of the East European. The second one is the field work in the Ukrainian sex by Oksana Zabushko. And it is in the quite similar context as the novel by Yuri Andruhovich. Oksana Zabushko discovers feminist writing in Ukraine, but she also discovers the post-colonial writing in the female voice. Her main character is the intellectual who comes to the United States for the conference. And when you take the field work in the Ukrainian sex, you will find out the so-called conference speech. Oksana Zabushko thinks if she comes to conference and she would be asked, what is Ukraine and what is to be a contemporary Ukrainian? and contemporary East European. What would she answer? Uh, the field work in the Ukrainian sex by Oksana Zabushko is already translated in more than 10 languages and it was republished more than 10 times in Ukraine, so it is kind of our national bestseller. And also this prose is very emotional and passionate. The last heavyweight novel is The Death and the Penguin by Andrei Kurkov. This novel has already been translated in more than 30 languages. And there is even a map that depicts different literary works which represent each national state on the world. And Death and the Penguin is that very novel that represents Ukraine there. The New York Times calls this novel the striking portrait of the post-Soviet isolation. And this is a novel about a man uh, who lives in a solitude, but he has a friend, and this friend is a penguin Misha. So we have Victor and we have his penguin. The main character, Victor, is a short story writer. And The Death and the Penguin is really fascinating novel. The last novel I wish to tell you about is Voroshilovgrad by Serhii Zhadan. In German, it was also translated like Jazz in Donbass, and it is also a novel about post-Soviet times in Ukraine.
but not about 1990s, but about those strange times in the beginning of the new millennium. Jadan writes about Herman, who is a young advertising expert, and he lives his life in Kharkiv. But one day he receives the phone call and he needs to come to his native town. Jadan writes about the land of Voroshilovgrad. That was the name after the Soviet commander of the Luhansk city. In this way, Jadan also writes about the decommunization in Ukraine, but also in the Eastern Europe. The novel also became a film and it was called The Wild Fields. Jadan writes about the responsibility, the responsibility that you need to take and the responsibility that you bear when you are an adult person. These four books are really heavy ways and they represent Ukraine and Ukrainian literature abroad. But the last decade was really surprisingly grateful for the Ukrainian literature and now I wish to tell you about the youngsters and also about the new names and new tendencies which are already known abroad from the contemporary Ukrainian literature. The first person I wish to tell you about is Artem Chekh. We have two brand new translations of his works and the first one is the Polish translation of his book of short stories, District D. You see it here in my hands. And it is the short story collection about his childhood in central Ukraine in Cherkasy region. This is about 90s in Ukraine. How they looked like and how was the childhood there? How those children became adults? The second one is the point zero and it has been translated into English language. This book tells us about Artem's experience at war in Eastern Ukraine. Artem is the representative of probably the first generation of people who were raised in after Soviet times and he tells us how it looks like to get adult now. The second one is Andri Lupka and last year we saw two new translations from him. The first was Carbide published in the United Kingdom by the Yantar Publishing and the second one was your Glance Chio Chio San, which was published in Northern Macedonia. Andri offers the reader the adventure novel. First published in 2015, The Carbide is a novel which tells us what we get after the revolution of dignity. And what we get is lack of the reforms. The people in Ukraine wish to be a part of the Europe, but what do they need? How may them associate themselves with the West? There are different approaches to speak about the war in Ukraine in the form of literature. And one of them is used by Haska Shayan in her novel Behind Their Backs. This novel was distinguished with the European Union Prize for Literature. And the jury of the European Union Prize for Literature even told that they also felt behind the backs, as felt the main character of the novel. Marta. Marta lives in Lviv in a city in western Ukraine and her boyfriend decides to go to a war. We see the experience of a girlfriend which is left for herself, which lives her life behind the back because the war is in the east and she has her stuff done at home. There are also writers living outside Ukraine but being a successful part of the Ukrainian literature. And I will dwell upon three of them. The first one is Vasil Makhno and his last book of short stories, The House in Betin Hollow, was recently published in Germany. Vasil Makhno lives in New York and he develops his experience in, as a New Yorker, but also as a person from the Western Ukraine. He is well known in Ukraine and he even holds the BBC Book of the Year for the short collection story The House in Baton Hollow. But now he is also well translated abroad. The second one is Yaroslav Melnik, who lives in Lithuania and writes novels. He is translated into Lithuanian and also in French and he is really well known author in French now.
What is more, he still gets a lot of readership here in Ukraine and he also was nominated for the BBC Book of the Year for his recent novel Masha or Post Fascism. And the last but not the least is Tanya Malerchuk, who lives now in Austria. She even got the Ingebo Bachmann Prize for Literature for her short story written in German. But Tanya Malerchuk still writes in Ukrainian and she discovers, for example, the topic of historical memory. Her recent novel, The Forgottenness, has been already translated into German and into English. Melnik and Malerchuk both discover the historical topics in Ukrainian history. But Yaroslav Melnik usually uses some fantastic medium to tell the story, while Tanya Malerchuk narrates using the real historical events, like she did that in her recent novel Forgottenness. Last years are rich for the translation of Ukrainian humanities literature. Harvard University Press published two big researchers from the Ukrainian history. First one is the Ukrainian Women in Gulag by Oksana Kis, and the second one is by Yuri Kostenko, and it is the nuclear disarmament in Ukraine. Also, I wish to figure out the Ukrainian series in Ibidem Press. They publish the translation of the humanities from the Ukrainian literature. And, for example, they published the book by Mikhailo Vennitsky about the revolution of dignity. But also they have published the literary reportages by Olesya Yeremchuk, our others, and by Natalka Humanyuk, The Forgotten Island. Our others is the book about the Ukrainian national minorities, how they live, which is their cuisine, and what do they do now. And the book by Natalka Humanyuk is the reportage about the occupation of the Crimea island. It tells us the stories of those people who left there, but also the stories of those people who were not able to stay at their homes. Last years were fruitful for the Ukrainian poetry in translation. First of all, we have a lot of new books in English translation, and they were distinguished by different awards. Firstly, I wish to tell you about Serhii Jadan and his book, What We Live For, What We Die For. It has been translated by Virlana Tkach and Wanda Phipps, and it was published by Yale University Press and long listed for the Pan Award for the Poetry in Translation. And the book by Serhii Jadan, published in the Lost Horse Press and called The New Orthography, is now shortlisted also for the Pen Award for the Poetry in Translation. The Lost Hall Press is a small press publishing a different poetry series in the United States, and for example, they have the poetry series. And here you may see how looks the book of Yuri Andruhovich published by the Lost Horse. Also, Ukrainian poetry is well translated in Poland and Bulgaria. For example, Ostap Slavinsky was published last year in Bulgaria in Sofia, and the big anthology of the Ukrainian modernism translated by the president of Polish pen club Adam Pomorsky was published in Wroclaw. Uh, the last point about adult literature I wish to raise is the resurrection of Ukrainian modernism prose. A lot of Ukrainian modernist authors were fully rehabilitated only in 1990s. 70 years after the Stalin Great Terror. And in the last years, a lot of them were translated into foreign languages. For example, The City by Valerian Pidmohelny was translated into Czech. And The Girl with the Teddy Bear by Viktor Petrov Domontovich will be translated and published in German language in Austria. It is the classics of the Ukrainian literature and we are really happy to share it with the foreign reader. The main visit card of the contemporary Ukrainian book market is still the children literature. And here the old line publishing house holds the line because their authors like Agravka, Oksana, Bula hold the main prizes for the children literature abroad. For example, Agravka holds the European Design Award, but 
also the Bologna Book Fair Award. If you ask me why translate the Ukrainian literature, I will say that it keeps up with the global topics. On the one hand, we have our own answers to the main global movements. On the other hand, we have really specific experience. I mean that uh, Ukrainians really get used to very rapid changes. And it is beautifully depicted in the Ukrainian literature. So I think that Europe, but also the whole world, needs to know more about this experience. If you wish to enrich your literature with contemporary and adventurous stories, translate Ukrainian literature now and keep up with the news from the Ukrainian publishing houses.